Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so today we will start over chapter number two, uh, which is mainly about computer fun uh, networking fundamentals, and uh, we will also discuss Internet of Things (IOTs). So we have five main things in this chapter, five agenda items, and I have divided this chapter into two parts. Today we're gonna cover the first part of the chapter, and uh, in first part we will discuss first three agenda items, and the last two agenda items will be discussed in our next video, uh, chapter number uh, chapter two, part two. So, uh, firstly, we'll start with the OSI model, uh, the Open System Interconnect Interconnection model. Then we will talk about TCP/IP model, and we'll discuss what's the difference and when we use TCP model and when we use OSI model. Uh, then, quickly, we'll we'll define IOTs and we'll quickly discuss the architecture of IOTs, the drivers of IOTs, evolution of IOTs, and Last, we will discuss impacts of IOTs in different areas or different aspects of life. So starting with the OSI model. So I believe some of you guys uh, might heard of OSI model, o Open System Interconnection model. You might heard of uh, OSI model in your networking class. So I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of all those uh, OSI model layers and the different operations, different function of each layer. So OSI model mainly has, it has seven layers. It mainly has seven layers. And uh, the topmost layer, I mean, the way how I actually remember the layer is basically the keyword A, P, S, T, N, and D, P. So that's the way how I have I have memorized uh, the the layers. In fact, so is the first uh, the highest layer. The seventh layer is the application layer. Then we have presentation layer. Then we have session layer, uh, the transport layer, network layer, then we have data link layer, and the, the last layer is physical layer. So it's layer number one, that's layer number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So starting with your application layer, uh, because I believe it will, be, it will make uh, you guys more sense, uh, more easy to digest and understand. So starting with our, uh, application layer application layer as name suggests it includes all the applications uh, installed in our computer through which user can interact for example google chrome for example microsoft word so application layer include all the software the user applications user defined software so application layer it is basically responsible responsible for user interaction and the uh, <clears throat> user interaction and it, it basically includes uh, applications, apps installed on computer through which, which user can interact user can interact with computer in fact so those applications are microsoft word excel and all that uh, then comes to the presentation layer two main agenda or two main things that pre presentation layer does number one presentation layer um, it basically responsible it is responsible for data and coding like source coding, channel coding, data expansion, data formatting. Uh, and then it is also responsible for data encryption. Like the cryptography, basically, it comes in this particular domain, the presentation layer. Then we have session layer, which is which responsible of maintaining the <clears throat> communication session. Maintaining communication session between computers. So mainly what we do in the session layer, we assign session tokens. Starting of the session, ending of the session, all that log information is also the part of the session layer. Then we have transport layer and transport layer mainly uh, what it does, it it's a very important layer because it it provides formatting of your packets like it it break up break down the data into small chunks or you can say small packets 
So it break the data into small packets. Uh, other than that, on transport layer, we do flow control like information or data flow control plus data, sorry, the error detection. Error detection and error correction is also performed on transport layer. Then we have a network layer. In our network layer, what we do, uh, it's basically we do the logical implementation of network. Logical implementation of network plus we do the IP address assigning. So IP address assigning, assignment. So IP addresses, uh, subnetting, subnet mask assigning is responsibility of network layer. Then we have the data link layer. It's very, very important layer uh, because in the local area network communication, uh, it, it actually, it, it, it's basic data link layer basically may, uh, data link layer makes it po possible uh, the communication so basically in data link layer uses the mac addresses use the mac addresses <clears throat> of the computer and let them communicate over local area network okay so please remember that for example let me just give you a basic idea about uh, data link layer we use a protocol called called art protocol on data link layer we will discuss that in our upcoming chapters in detail but for example let's say this is your computer and you are basically connected in a small local area network where we have we are connected with other computers as well so uh, for example if you want to communicate with any of the computer in your local area network you need to know the mac address so please remember for local area network communication for LAN communication you need to know the mac address so you need to know the mac address of that computer for communication over wide area network let's say a network uh, or a computer which is located outside your local area network then you need to know the ip address of that computer okay uh the physical layer it's very simple physical layer what it does it converts analog to digital basically it does signaling so it does it converts analog signal which is coming from uh, your isp coming traveling through the wires it is basically in analog form but computers are uh, digital they require the data should be digital so it converts the analog data into digital and then convert back digital back to analog so that's basically what the physical layer does so these are the o this is the osa model uh, all computer activities starting from software development everything is basically encompasses between the layers. So you can say all the working of computers are basically organized in OSA layer. The next layer is, or uh, the next model is called TCP IP model. It stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol model. So in order to communicate over internet, so a computer cannot communicate over internet without TCP IP model. So TCP IP model is basically this is a tcp ip model is a suite of protocol it's a suite of protocol that allows computer to communicate with other devices other computers over internet So without uh, compliance or without TCP IP protocol, a computer cannot connect with the internet, cannot communicate over internet. So on TCP IP layer, on TCP, in TCP IP model, we have mainly four layers, starting with the application layer, highest layer, transport layer, internet layer, and then we have a network layer. Application layer is basically where we have uh, user and application, for example, your browser or all the application through which user can directly interact with computer and eventually with internet. Transport layer, just like we discussed, it can break down the data into small packets and then uh, data formatting and data uh, encapsulation is the responsibility of transport layer. Internet layer, it adds the IP addresses of source and destination uh, in the packet. And network layer is responsible for you know network to network communication and again we use mac address just like we we discussed in data link layer so we use mac addresses in network layer of tcp ip model so let me just give you a, a basic overview let's say application layer as i mentioned 
application layer. It includes all the applications, for example, um, your Google Chrome browsers, any kind of cloud-based application as well. The protocols that run on application layer is like FTP, uh, file transfer protocol, HTTP, whenever you open the website, it controls the content of a website, HTTPS, DNS, etc. There are all these protocols are these protocols run on application layer. Transport layer, as I mentioned earlier, transport layer, it break down the data into small packets. Internet layer, it adds the IP addresses of source and destination, okay? Like from where the packet is coming from and where the packet will be had to. Network layer, it uses the MAC addresses of the gateways and point-to-point -point contact. Let me explain to you. So for example, let's say, let's create a TCP packet. How a TCP packet look like, let's say, if you want to visit a website, for example, you open your computer and you just type www.ggc.edu. So what will happen? You will open your browser. Once you open your browser, a packet will be created and that packet is called, it will have HTTP header. And what HTTP header will have? Like for example, depending upon which service, let's say if you want to just visit the website, it will be the HTTP traffic, port number 80 and all. If the website is pushed HTTPS, so it will be a secure packet in fact. Now, after the request is HTTP header, like you want to request the website to send their web, web page to you. In transport layer, it needs to know the port number. Please remember, it requires port numbers, like from which particular port this packet will go out from your computer and from which particular port the other, the destination computer will, will, will actually accept that. So what will happen? This packet uh, another uh, you can say chunk will be added here when it will be passed from transport layer so here it is called tcp header and now http header will be still there which is basically the information about the website or whatever the service is tcp header tcp header is basically source port number source port number and the destination port number so port, uh, source port number is of course 80 and destination is again 80 if it is the HTTP packet. Next, the okay, so next is the internet layer when this uh, intermediary packet passed through the internet layer, rest of the things will be same like you will have TCP header here, we will have HTTP header here, okay? And then internet layer will add IP header. Now what will be IP header? Mainly in IP header, we will have source IP address, destination IP address. Source IP address is basically your computer IP address and destination IP address is the uh, IP address of your server, uh, the web server in fact. Last is the, uh, when it will be passed from the last layer, which is the Mac, uh, the network layer, it will actually add the information of Mac addresses. So rest of the stuff will be same, like you will have HTTP header, we will have TCP header here, we will have IP header here. The last is basically the, uh, you can say Ethernet header. So this Ethernet header has the information about the MAC address. So no, please remember one thing. Let's say this is your computer and you want to access this website ggc.edu. So that's, that's ggc.edu. We cannot, we, we don't know in advance the MAC address of ggc.edu and it doesn't make a kind of sense as well. So the net, on the network layer, the ethernet header or the MAC address is gonna be your router MAC address. Router MAC address. So we will add the MAC address of our router. And then this router, let's say, uh, if you wanna get to ggc.edu, you, you will be redirected to this particular router. So when this packet, I mean, this particular packet arrives to this router, so this particular router will replace the uh, MAC address of the next router. Like the, the destination will get changed, the destination MAC address will get changed, and then it will actually uh, get, get to uh, the desired website or so. And this particular packet is called a TCP packet. Now packet or internet or on TCP IP model, there could be two types of packets. A packet could be TCP packet, Packet could be TCP packet or packet could be UDP. TCP transmission control protocol and UDP is user datagram. So datagram protocol. So this the uh, UDP packet is called connectionless. Connectionless while TCP packet is 
connection oriented why we call it connection oriented because in tcp pa packet what will happen let's say you want to visit this website let's say this website so firstly your computer will establish a three way handshake will ask your let's say you want to visit ggc.edu so your computer will send a packet and ask him hey are you up if it respond you back then you will i mean all this operation will happen but in udp packet what will happen let's say a ping packet ping is basically a type of udp packet so let's say you can you can send a packet to any website regardless of whether the website is up or down so if the website is up you will get the reply if the website is down you will not get any reply in udp packet okay so please remember tcp is a connection oriented like whenever you visit a website and visit you know watch netflix and all that stuff you are basically communicating tcp packets while udp is connection less like ping packet trace route and all uh now the next is the Second agenda item, so that's the uh, the first agenda item, uh, OSA model and TCP model. Second agenda item is IoT definition. IoT stands for Internet of Things. So Internet of Things are basically, it's the collection or you can say a network of sensors. Let's say, for example, let's say this is your car. Let's say you have a car and I have uploaded a very, very good video. Um, and I will also uh, paste a link of the video in the description. Please do watch the video to have the better idea about IoTs. I'm just giving you one example. There are many, many uh, different applications of IoTs. So let's say this is your car. So the, all the 2019 and 22 luxury cars, they, they come with many sensors. So I'm just giving you a hypothetical example for understanding. Let's say this is your car and it has, for example, 10 sensors. Let's say 10 sensors. This sensor, it monitors your, for example, tire pressure. This sensor monitors your engine temperature and stuff like that. So, for example, you're driving the car on the road and you just have noticed a check engine light. And that might be, for example, you have low, low tire pressure. So your computer actually, I mean, your car uh, sensor or main computer, main console, it tells you, uh, it shows you a warning like the check engine light or something like that, or maybe the air pressure light. You, I mean, that's the way how you can actually find out like maybe, hey, I, I need to I need to put air in my tire or maybe I need to get it replaced and stuff like that. So another thing is, for example, all these sensors, if they, I mean, beside sending out the data to your main computer, just imagine if they are also sending out the data to nearby dealership where we have a cloud server maybe. So that's basically called IOTs, Internet of Things. Other examples are, for example, uh, are, uh, uh, the RFID chips, which are quickly replacing the barcodes. So barcodes, like the zebra lines, whenever you purchase any grocery item, uh, the uh, the point of sale guy or the salesperson, they, they, they get it scanned through the barcodes. RFID will be a game changer because in RFID, they don't have to take the product out of your cart. The product is equipped with the chip and it will actually, I mean, when you just take your cart near to the exit door, all the products will get scanned in like one or two seconds and you will see your bill. You just have to swipe your card and you can take your card out. Like, I mean, rather than barcodes in the barcode, let's say if you, if you fill your cart, for example, with hundred items. So you have to take all the items out of your cart, get them scanned and then put them back. Just imagine if we replace this technology with RFID, what's going to happen? So this is your cart. You have all those hundred items. You don't have to take them out. There is basically a reader which scan all the items at once and you will see your bill, swipe the card and you are out. That's RFID. And all these chips are basically RFID chips or IoT sensor. No, these sensor are, uh, they build a I mean, they, they communicate a lot of information. We'll discuss that, how we can perform, how we can collect useful information out of all those information. So let's let's come back to definition now. So IoT, Internet of Things, what is that? It is the collection of, IoT is a collection of inter-related computing devices interrelated computing devices which are provided with unique id like rfid chip uh, through the rfid chip unique id and ability to transmit data 
विदाउट ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन so without human intervention it can transmit the data autonomously they can transmit the data now the thing is iot uh, you can you can build iot sensors or iot network uh, for any kind of application like for example robots you can use iot's in robots and those uh, the sensors in the robot will communicate with the cloud and stuff like that there are many many applications for that um, other than that iot is social media it is also if, uh, I mean, it has a lot of impacts in our life, social networking sites, social media. Uh, there are many, many, uh, I mean, a lot of data is being collected from social media as well. Uh, some of the data is very helpful in data analytics for uh, political campaigns and all that stuff. They do use that data as well. Other than that, wipe voice over IP. Voice over IP. It has, I mean, it, it has started replacing the traditional telephony a lot, like WhatsApp, Viber, all these applications, like especially the 5G. Uh, some some folks, you might heard of Google Voice. So you don't have to purchase a SIM, nothing like that, and you can directly get a number through Google Voice, which is purely based on VoIP. So all these applications beside IOTs, they are also, uh, they are also have a lot of impacts in our lives. Um... For IOTs, as we as we just discussed, the IOTs. For IOTs. Uh, these are the five main drivers of IOT which make which are required uh, for successful implementation of our successful design of IOT network. The first is IP addressing. Since these IOT sensors will be you know in enormous amount, so we need to use IPv6 instead of IPv4. So I believe everybody is well familiar with the difference of IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, IPv4, like in IPv4, if you look at the IP address of IPv4, you will see there are, there are mainly four main parts like 192.168.2.1, something like that. So each particular bit, like each particular domain, it the maximum size could be 255. Why 255? Because the maximum length of one part or each part is of eight bits. So 2 raised to power 8 is basically 256. So that's the max that you can get. Like minimum could be 0, of course, all the way to 255. Okay. So 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits. So total uh, IP address length is 32 bit in IPv4. In IPv6, we will have like one, like again, the, uh, the IP address will look like same. But the one part or one company, one part of IPv6 will be of 32 bit, like of uh, 30. so 32 32 32 32 so total 128 bit will be the length of ipv6 and now we can we can actually assign theoretically speaking i mean uh, in a specific location it's kind of in millions or billions of devices can be connected okay billions of devices like it's kind of infinite as of today okay ipv6 that's why we we need to switch over it then for communication um, again, we need a wireless communication technology, wireless communication technology for IOTs and of course 5G and all that internet speed is also uh, will play a very, very uh, important role. Size of IOT sensor, which can be embedded on a product or maybe you can put it in your car and all that stuff. Smaller size, miniaturization. Miniaturization is very important, like the sensor size should be as small as possible, plus faster computing. Faster computing. Then cloud, uh, whatever these sensors, let's say, for example, again, as I mean, in your cars, for example, these sensors are basically sending out the data uh, to a cloud or a server. So cloud, what is a cloud? And again, there could be hundreds or thousands of cards like that. They are basically sending out the data to that cloud. So cloud is very important again. And what is a cloud? Cloud is basically a network of servers over internet. That is basically cloud. And cloud computing will be, I mean, if you want to define cloud computing, cloud computing is the process of storing managing and processing of data using cloud 
using cloud rather than storing on your own computer like for example application service providers uh, software as a service like for example google docs is the best example for cloud computing where uh, you don't have to download google docs on your computer you can actually type in over the google cloud in fact then data analytics it is very very important uh, thing again in data analytics the definition is process of inspecting cleansing and modeling of data to discover useful information and suggesting uh, some recommendations recommendations so this is called data analytics for example let's say uh, on the cloud just imagine you are basically getting a lot of data for example let's let's make it more simple to understand social media sites so on social media side we are getting a lot of a um, lot of it enormous amount of data different kind of data and stuff like that for example uh, i want to design or i just want to extract information about people political bias like which party they support so in order to extract that data, I need to design some algorithms, like because you have different, I mean, data could be about anything, but I want to specifically find a data about political bias. So that is called data analytics. Uh, one of the most important component of uh, IoT without this component called RFID, radio frequency identification radio frequency identification without rfid we cannot implement uh, iot's so what is rfid chip rfid is basically like for example this is a product so we will embed a rfid chip on that particular product now this particular chip will have an id and the user can actually i mean and it can it can actually monitor whatever it's supposed to monitor and transmit the information to cloud so this is the three packages that comes with rfid chip Firstly, you will have a unique ID, then monitor, and then the cloud. Uh, like at the European Union, they have uh, they did a project RFID based cattle identification, buffalo identification. They they actually they uh, they embedded the RFID chip on all the cows, and just to differentiate between the cows, so they can monitor their different activities, their breeding habits, etc., etc. So this is RFID, and of course, without RFID, uh, we cannot implement IoTs. Next, the model of communication. Again, this is all the definition of IoTs. Uh, there are two types of communication which, uh, which exist over internet. One is real time, like it occurs instantaneously. Instantaneously, let me just write down, instant instantaneously for example your phone call you just make a phone call and it will directly get you connected real-time uh, messages are like your i messages okay nothing is stored on on apple network let's say you just type a message from your cell phone for example this is cell phone you type a message it if your other phone uh, the receiver's phone is connected with the internet the message will get delivered there is no intermediary server involved Store and forward is basically where we have intermediary servers involved. Firstly, message will be stored on that server and then it will get delivered. Just like on WhatsApp or for example, SMS. So short message service or your WhatsApp messages. So if somebody type, uh, send you a message, the message will go to WhatsApp server or SMS service center. And then SMS service center will send you that message. This is called store and forward mechanism. There are two types of communication, real time, like your voice call, I messages, these are real time uh, because those things are not stored anywhere. And store and forward, like WhatsApp messages, um, your messenger messages, etc., etc. Because these messages store on a server first and then they will get you delivered. Uh, now the last agenda item is IoT impacts. So there are many, many impacts of IoTs on human, for example, um, you can say the health monitoring, for example, uh, you can say uh, the location tracking, tracking, for example, uh, other than that, uh, you can say um, home security 
it's another part home security etc there are many many applications where these iot's uh they have they have actually um, they made a significant contributions here so uh, by using iot's for example google has recently uh, they just came up with the with a wristband through which uh, patient uh, which actually monitors the patient fever uh, their body temperature their blood pressure and send the information to doctor there are many examples like that for example uh, google again google they actually came up with the ipad uh, they actually came up with the uh, the the co uh, contact lens for the diabetic patients so it measures the glucose level through their tears and send the information to uh, to the connected device similarly it has many impacts on businesses like uh, all these companies uh, the like retail store me in fact even the retail stores they have to have a website for their online visibility so online visibility is very important nowadays online visibility and how you can make yourself visible over internet uh, again through by making your own website by making your facebook pages etc etc uh, virtual virtual workplace like people they actually work from home uh, freelancing like one of the website is fiverr.com so this particular website on this if you visit this website uh, you will see plenty of vendors plenty of freelancers they are working on it if you want if even if you want to make a presentation so you will find uh, a freelancer who can who can get it done for you for maybe ten dollars or five dollars similarly uh, you can get your logo your website anything whatever you want to do so you will find the freelancers on this website and if you have your own uh, any any kind of skill so just visit this website and you will see a lot of good things uh, now uh, e-commerce is quickly replacing the um, brick and model model uh, like you don't have to have a physical location of your office you can even work from home you can work with Amazon and sell the products and you can you can uh, you can store your goods you don't have to own a warehouse even so you can use the Amazon services or any there are plenty of models in fact so e-commerce is basically buying buying or selling services or products services or products over internet so that is called e-commerce there are three main models of e-commerce nowadays one is called b2c business to consumer where customers directly purchase from websites b2b where businesses conduct sale or purchase with other businesses okay like wholesale kind of things consumer to consumer model is basically where customer customers purchase directly from customers for example uh, marketplace of Facebook for example the uh, Craigslist etc etc these are consumer to consumer model and whenever you go for e-commerce so of course there is a, a compliant like pay payment methodology like you might uh, require you might require uh, to uh, 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 to use the clients uh, credit card information debit card information so then if you have a small company even where you store uh, customers credit card number or debit card number you have to comply with PCI DSS so PCI DSS it ensures ensures the security of clients financial information like their credit card and debit card information PCI DSS it stands for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. So, for example, uh, if you have a small company, um, then what will happen? PCI DSS, PCI, they actually conduct a survey, just uh, which is called PCI audit. They do uh, they do the audit just to see whether you are compliant with all the protocols defined by PCI or not how you can store the data and stuff like that. Like, for example, if you have a gas station, 
So according to PCI directions, PCI directions, uh, what you can do or PCI protocol, they cannot hold your credit card information for more than 20, 48 hours. So if you are in the gas station business, uh, you might have, for example, 7-Eleven or any gas stations. So of course, you cannot hold uh, the credit card information for more than 48 hours. And if your servers are basically aligned, they, they automatically does it for you. You don't have to do that. For e-commerce strategy, how you can implement your e-commerce stuff, uh, of course, you need four things. First of all, you need to have e-commerce solution. An e-commerce solution means you have to have a website or you have to have a Facebook page or you have to have a application, the computer application or mobile application as well. Uh, other than that, other than that, um, you have to have a internet marketing strategy, internet marketing, like in order to make your website or app, app uh, visible, which is called SEO search engine optimization for example if anybody google for example hey uh for example a shoe store near me why your shop should should actually show first people spend thousands and millions of dollars sometime in seo uh then the delivery mechanism this should be a delivery mechanism and of course the payment which i mentioned the pci most of the people they actually use credit card and debit card uh, like and there are a few folks they use the cash apps um, and some other stuff but again the PCI the payment card industry standards are more common uh, last few things uh, issue of the mobility so with the IOTs there will be a one problem let me just give you example uh, then of course we can we can have many applications of that problem as well so for example you actually work in uh, Lawrenceville for example, you work at Lawrenceville and you live, let's say, at Johns Creek. So let's say this is you. This is your cell phone. And you're using the cellular internet, like your data plan. So and as you know, whenever you are connected with the internet, you will be assigned an IP address. So you will be assigned an IP address issued by your ISP, Internet Service Provider. So let's say if you, if you commute from Johns Creek all the way to Lawrenceville, so the question is, what will happen? Like in between, you have Swanee as well. You might have Duluth as well. And then you get to Lawrenceville. So let's say when you get to Swanee, do you use the same? I mean, does your IP address will remain same? Will it be a static IP address? Like you have been assigned IP address at Johns Creek. Will you carry the same IP address in Swanee? When you enter in Duluth, will you carry the same IP address? When you get to uh, Lawrenceville, will your IP address will remain same or not? That's a question of IP mobility. We'll talk about it in detail in IP mobility architecture, uh, which is our, let me, this is our uh, agenda item number one in our uh, next lecture, part two. Uh, that's the problem, we'll discuss that. Another problem is the bring your own device policy, uh, which emerged after the virtual offices people work from home so byod stand for bring your own device many companies the small companies especially they they uh, they use this particular policy so bring your own device policy uh, it's a good policy from financial or you can say from um, financial point of view of course companies they don't have to spend they don't have to give you a separate laptop or computer uh, but the biggest problem is security and privacy that's the biggest problem with byod policy we'll discuss that in detail the last thing is the mobile applications mobile applications are getting a lot of attention these days companies who have a website for example let me give you an example chase bank pnc bank beside the websites they do make the web uh, the mobile applications the reason is that 70 percent of internet traffic comes through the tablets or cell phones 70% of internet traffic, it's not my number, it's the Google's number, they have collected information from, they conducted a survey, they collected information from many servers, many websites, many renamed, renowned website, uh, the service providers, etc, etc. And this is 70% of traffic, it comes from cell phone or tablets. Now the thing is, on cell phone and tablet, we use an operating system which is called mobile operating system, which is like uh, iOS, Android, which is entirely different than your personal computer operating system like Windows and Macintosh. 
the architecture is entirely different that is why your traditional websites are not compatible like your traditional websites are not compatible with mobile devices so what companies they do they make a mobile version of website so for example if you visit a website for example even if you visit ggc.edu you will see you will notice that the website will start from m.ggc.edu it's a mobile version of that website okay uh it's good because you can you can actually it will uh because it will it resolve the resolution issues and i mean make the website compatible with the device and all that so whenever you visit a website, they can detect that the query came from a mobile or a personal computer. They can see your operating system and then they send you the mobile version or the traditional website. Okay. Depending up upon your operating system, if they do have the mobile version of their website, if they don't have, of course, uh, you will get the traditional website, which might have some, uh, some uh, resolution issues. Uh, but the best is the mobile app. Mobile app is the best. Why? Because it is more secure as compared to even website. Why? Because if you use mobile app, so if let's say if I have a mobile app of, for example, Chase Bank, Chase Bank. So what will happen? I have a VPN client on my computer. So whenever you visit, I mean, use uh, the mobile app, for example, for you to manage your account. So what will happen? It establishes a secure tunnel between your computer and the, the server, the bank server. So nobody can sniff or nobody can see whatever you are transmitting because you have a secure tunnel between server and uh, uh, your computer or your cell phone maybe. So mobile apps, they actually work as a VPN, virtual private network, which establishes a secure tunnel between your device and the server. We will continue our discussion from here. Uh, see you guys in next class.